एवरी वन वेलकम टू अनदर एपिसोड ऑफ माइंड मैप टूडेज टॉपिक ऑफ डिस्कशन इज पेनसुलर प्लेट्यू फर्स्ट ऑफ ऑल वी विल डिस्कस अबाउट द इंट्रोडक्शन ऑफ द टॉपिक देन वी विल डिस्कस अबाउट सेंट्रल हाईलैंड ईस्टर्न हाईलैंड डेगन प्लेट्यू वेस्टर्न घाट्स और सहयाद्रीज ईस्टर्न घाट्स एंड लास्टली प्रैक्टिस क्वेश्चन फर्स्ट ऑफ ऑल मूविंग ऑन टू द इंट्रोडक्शन ऑफ द टॉपिक द पेनसुलर प्लेट्यू इज अ टेबल लैंड रीजन लोकेटेड इन द सदर्न पार्ट ऑफ इंडिया it is made up of old crystalline igneous and metamorphic rocks this plateau is shaped like a triangle with its base lying to the north and its apex pointing towards the south now let's discuss about central highlands it is an expansive region in the northern part of the indian peninsular plateau lying between the indo gangetic plains in the north and the narmada river in the south it is an irregular triangle with the vindhya and aravalli mountain ranges as its prominent features The Malwa Plateau, the Bundelkhand upland, and the Baghelkhand region are parts of the Central Highlands. Chambal, Sindh, Betwa, and Kane are some of the major rivers draining this region. Aravalli Ridge. It spans across the states of Rajasthan, Haryana, and Gujarat, stretching from Delhi to Palanpur in Gujarat. It is one of the oldest mountain ranges in the world. The range acts as the dividing line between the Thar Desert and the fertile land of the plains. Vindhyas these are the east west oriented mountains that span across the states of Madhya Pradesh Rajasthan and Gujarat the Vindhya range is not as continuous as the Himalayas it comprises numerous plateaus and hills the Vindhyas have historically acted as a cultural divide between north india and south india Satpura it lies to the south of the Vindhyas stretching across Madhya Pradesh Maharashtra and Chhattisgarh this range is rugged with a series of seven mountains Shat means seven and Pura means mountain Narmada Rift Valley it is situated between the Vindhya and Satpura ranges the Narmada river flows through this rift valley and empties into the Arabian Sea this valley showcases evidence of volcanic activity in the form of black soils and basaltic soils Malwa Plateau it spreads across the western part of Madhya Pradesh and southeastern Rajasthan the region is characterized by undulating topography deep valleys and high volcanic plains Bundelkhand Plateau This plateau spans across parts of Madhya Pradesh and Uttar Pradesh. It is characterized by rocky terrain and sparse vegetation due to its hard rock bed and shallow soil. Now let's discuss about Eastern Highlands. This section includes Chhota Nagpur Plateau, Bastar Plateau, Meghalaya Plateau, Rewa Plateau, Bhanader Plateau, Ramgarh Plateau and Simlipal Plateau. Chhota Nagpur Plateau. It is located predominantly in Jharkhand. It also extends into parts of West Bengal, Chhattisgarh and Odisha. Major rivers like Subarna Rekha, Damodar Brahmani and Koyal originate here. Damodar River Valley demarcates Hazari Bagh Plateau towards north and Ranchi Plateau towards the south. These plateaus are characterized by exfoliation domes commonly called as patlands. Bastar Plateau. It lies in the southern part of Chhattisgarh and the plateau gradually slopes towards the east and drains into the Godavari River. Meghalaya Plateau it is an extension of the Deccan Plateau and is rich in mineral resources like coal limestone and uranium the plateau gives rise to several rivers and it is where the Brahmaputra and the Barak rivers enter the Indian territory the region includes the towns of Cherapunji and Mesenram known to be among the wettest places on earth due to their heavy rainfall Shillong Plateau it's part of Meghalaya Plateau and encompassing the state's capital Shillong Mikir Hills are part of it The plateau is a prominent flat topped table land standing out against the hilly terrains of the state. It's composed primarily of hard rock formations. Karbi Anglong Plateau. It lies in the state of Assam. The region is predominantly inhabited by the Karbi and Dimasa tribes. The plateau is drained by several rivers including the Barapani. Now let's discuss about Deccan Plateau. It lies to the south of the Narmada River and covers most of the peninsular region of India. The plateau is slightly tilted towards the east and is drained by the Godavari, Krishna and Kaveri rivers. It is characterized by rolling plains, minimal elevation changes and black volcanic soil, ideal for cotton cultivation. The plateau is believed to be formed from volcanic eruptions as evidenced by the black basaltic soil present here. Maharashtra Plateau or Maharashtra Uplands. As the name suggests, this plateau covers a significant part of the Maharashtra state, extending into some parts of Madhya Pradesh and Chhattisgarh. It is characterized by flat-topped hills known as teknas and deep valleys. The black cotton soil derived from basaltic rocks makes the region agriculturally productive, especially for cotton cultivation. The Godavari and its tributaries, the Bhima and the Krishna, are major rivers that drain this plateau. Karnataka Plateau. 
It covers a major portion of the Karnataka state. It also extends into some parts of Tamil Nadu. The plateau is characterized by granite outcrops, rolling plains and the rich and the rich red soil which is fertile and ideal for crops like ragi, jowar and groundnut. The Tunga Bhadra, Krishna and parts of the Kaveri flow through this plateau. Telangana Plateau. It encompasses the majority of the Telangana state and Godavari, Krishna and Pinnar are the major rivers. Western Ghats or Sahyadris. The Western Ghats also known as the Sahyadri Mountains form a major mountain range along the western coast of India. The Western Ghats run parallel to the western coast of India starting from the border of Gujarat and Maharashtra, passing through the states of Maharashtra, Goa, Karnataka, Kerala and reaching the southern tip of Tamil Nadu. They are continuous and can be crossed through passes like the Pal Ghat and Bhor Ghat. The Western Ghats are recognized as one of the world's eight hottest hotspots of biological diversity. The average elevation is about 1,200 meters with the Anamudi standing at 2,695 meters being the highest peak. Unlike the Eastern Ghats which are broken and irregular, the Western Ghats form a fairly continuous mountain chain. Many significant rivers of peninsular India like the Godavari, Kaveri, Krishna and Tungabhadra originate from the Western Ghats, serving as crucial water sources for several states. Now let's discuss about Eastern Ghats. The Eastern Ghats span from West Bengal in the northeast, passing through Odisha, Andhra Pradesh and joining the Western Ghats in Tamil Nadu's Nilgiri Hills. These are a series of discontinuous and low hills lying in the eastern part of the Deccan Plateau. Their average elevation is 600 meters and they meet the Western Ghats at the Nilgiri Hills. They are relatively lower than the Western Ghats with the highest peak being Jindhagada Peak in Andhra Pradesh standing at about 1690 meters. Shevare Hills, Jawadi Hills and the Palkonda Range are part of the Eastern Ghats. The Ghats are characterized by a series of hills often interspersed with wide gaps and river valleys. The Ghats house a mix of tropical dry deciduous and moist deciduous forest. In some regions, there are patches of evergreen forest. Several major rivers like the Godavari, Mahanadi, Krishna and Kaveri cut through the eastern Ghats, draining into the Bay of Bengal. The Ghats, especially in Odisha and Andhra Pradesh, are rich in bauxite, iron ore and coal. Now it's time for the practice question. First of all, prelim question. Consider the following statements. 1. The Chota Nagpur Plateau is a part of the Deccan Plateau. To the average elevation of the peninsular plateau ranges between 600 to 900 meters. Select the correct answer from the following codes. Only one, only two, both one and two, or neither one nor two. And now main question. In what ways do the eastern and western ghats contribute to the physiography of the peninsular plateau and how do their relief features compare? So that's all for today. Stay tuned for the next episode. Thanks for watching.